What is good, YouTube? Quinn Wade. Basketball analysis coming to y'all with no playoff analysis tonight as it's no playoff games because the Suns finished up their series already. And we're going to talk about the mock draft. I waited a little bit to let things cool off to see how the lottery went. And I finally got some good opinions on how this draft might go. Now, before I start this draft, this isn't drafting the best player available. This is drafting things that make sense for a team. Um, and obviously, I'm going to say if a team should trade or not. So this isn't just going to be draft, 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 draft. This is just going to be my thoughts of all 15 teams in their current situation and what they should do in their spot. So... I think that that's something that I usually do every year. I'm going to continue to do that. People have been dying to know what I think about this draft, who I think should go number one, as I haven't really talked too much about this draft, as the season has just been crowned from starting early to starting back up. It's free agency and everything just really made it hard to make room for the draft, especially because they continue to push back the other draft. But number one, the Detroit Pistons, I think this is an easy one. You go with Kay Cunningham. You definitely have to go with him. This is a guy that has the size. This is a, a league where is dominated by perimeter players that has multiple skills. This is a guy that can handle the ball. This is a guy that can play make at a pretty good level for his age. He's only 19 years old. This is a guy that can shoot on or off the ball, create off the dribble, and is a good free throw shooter too. Plus, K has been criticized for being a done product. People look at him as a guy that might not have more upside than other guys in this draft and might not have huge two-way potential. Now, I do think he can be a solid defender. He has shown that already, but... People look at him like Luka. How far can Luka take you? And what we've seen from Luka was he has become a franchise iconic figure already. And he hasn't really had much playoff success or a big playoff run. And he's already one of the most respected, beloved players in the league. And I think K can do that too, just because he has the outside shot, the, uh, the floaters, the push shots, the little post moves. So he has enough bag to where he can score throughout the whole court. And he also has high IQ. And you don't really have those um, skill sets built in one player. And you get all that with K. And, and I think the Pistons need that. The Pistons had a terrible season. They need somebody that can put the ball in the basket. They need somebody that can create shots because Killian Hayes can't do that good enough at his current um, where he's at now as a player. And K can give you everything that you basically need for a player now. And I think that that's what the Pistons need. I don't think they trade it. I don't think they overthink it. I don't think that it's a player that you should take above K. This is the guy you should get. This is the guy that is, to me, a franchise changing player and that's what Detroit needs. Number two, this is where there's a little bit more controversy. People believe that Evan Mobley is the number two pick based off talent. People think that because it is the Rockets that they should consider thinking about not taking Evan Mobley just because Christian Wood is there. Plus they got Kevin, you know, Kevin just got down there. They wanted to use him as a starter. They got Deshaun Tate. Um, so they do have guards, even with John Wall, who is a ball dominant guard. And it's a tough situation because I do think Evan Mobley has huge two way upside. He's very raw in a lot of areas, but he, he's young and his team still does have to find what direction they're going to go in. They still want to be competitive. They still want to be partially rebuilding. And I do think they're eventually going to have to decide what they do. But the best part about it is they have a number two pick. It's not like they're going into free agency and have to figure this out. They have a chance to draft a Jalen Green or Evan Mobley in this position now and start the rebuild. 
Um, and to me, I think if you're going to pick a guy, you got to go with Jalen Green. Jalen Green is special. This guy can put the ball in the basket. He might not have the IQ. He might not have the playmaking. He might not have, you know, everything like Cade. But his upside is enormous because he's a better athlete. And this guy has the swagger that you need in, in a player that can bring excitement. And on top of that, I think he is NBA ready. I feel like he proved that in the G League that he can bang. He can score. He can get to his spots. And he can play his game. And it will translate at the NBA level. The thing about it is just filling out the rest of his game. I think that he seemed like a fast learner. He seems like he's hungry. And that's why you just can't pass up on him. He would, to me, be the number one pick if it wasn't a guy that just does everything now and is way bigger and, and K Cunningham, man. That just showed you how special Jalen Green is, that he went from being a top five pick to a lot of people see him as the number two pick. And a lot of that has to do with his growth and development, man, but also what he can bring to the table day one. Um, three, I think you definitely go with Mobley. You go with the, the guy that is the best, you know, right now for what you can do and there's really not no other players that in, in in a cleveland situation or even when you look at the guys available that has more upside than evan mobley and they don't really know what they're going to do with jerry allen how much they're going to pay or how many years they're going to give them but they still do have the option to play around with that a little bit more until they decide on the number they want to give them in the years which is most likely going to be the max um but Mobley is a guy that can be an outside guy, a guy that can rebound at a high level, play multiple positions, sometimes the four, sometimes the five, and give you that two-way rim protection, plus being able to be a little switchy, which you need in a modern-day big. The problem is, to me, offensively, he's far away from being a dominant impact player compared to the two guys that I put above him, and that's why I have him lower. Um, but when it comes to upside, he has the upside of being just as good as Jalen Green. The problem is he just don't have it today. And that's something that's going to be interesting because Cleveland has Colin Sexton and a lot of these guys that can already put the ball in the basket, that can already, you know, play as a perimeter player. They just need to shore up their inside and their defense. And I think Mobley, Okoro, will do that. And, you know, I think they do need to decide what they're going to do with their backcourt, who they're going to start, who they're going to, you know, build around long term. Because I don't think the Garland, Colin Sexton duo will work. And I've been saying that because they both bad defenders, plus they both are undersized, plus they're both not the greatest playmakers uh, for their position. And you only can really have one when it comes to eventually having to pay all these guys, including the Mobley, including the Coro. You're going to be able to either have to get rid of one of them or you're going to have to pay one significantly less. And that's the decision that they ultimately going to make. Um, years from now but at least you can have another guy that actually makes sense actually can help your defense even more and also have an upside of being a 20 and 10 and a couple blocks still guy which is rare to find but you have that and Mobley uh, available at number three which you don't really find a talent like him at three nowadays but I would love for them to get him Toronto, I'm a little bit more torn than other people. I'm not a big fan of Jalen Suggs, and I'm not really a big fan of putting him with Fred Van Fleet. I don't really like Van Fleet as a two-guard just because he's just so small, and they've been having that problem with him and Lowry, and you are eventually going to have to move on for Kyle Lowry, and it does make sense to go get your guy now because Suggs has proven that he can be a solid defender. He's shown that he can be a decent offensive player, um, and he is 19. So you hopefully your development, which they have shown that they have good um, ability to develop young players and, and help them reach their potential and even make them better than what they are as they continue to work on these guys years from now. But I think you should just stay with Fred Van Fleet, honestly. 
and probably go with Jonathan Kaminga because you really need the buckets. So I, I think you go with more size. I think you go with more scoring. And you can put OG. People don't realize that OG can be a two. He can be a three because he has the size to play both positions and he has the ability to shoot the ball and play without the ball. So it don't really matter where you put him. But I do think when you give him Van Fleet that type of money and you locked into a guy like um, Pascal Siakam, you just need that other guy that can put the ball in the basket. And I think Kaminga can do that for them. And I think that they already have the other positions filled. So this one might be a little controversial because everybody loves Suggs. But I'm going to go with Kaminga for them. Um, and I think that makes more sense. When you look at the Orlando Magic, they're in a tough situation because they have a bunch of young talent now, especially because they traded away Vucevic. They have another top five pick, which is right now, and they have guys coming off injury like Isaac and Markel Fultz, and you just don't know how long it's going to take them to get back to where they was before and be able to build upon that without, you know, hopefully not having no more injuries to them. Uh, but that's a tough situation. So if I'm the Magic, I, I just try to get something that I don't have. And I, I don't think you go Suggs here either. I think you go Scotty Barnes here. I think he moves up. He gives you that athleticism, that mobility. He gives you a competitor. He gives you effort and energy. And I think that you definitely pick him here. Because you just don't know when Isaac comes back. And even when you have Isaac, you look at him as a, a, a hybrid guy that can defend on the perimeter and also defend more in, in, the, in the paint as he gets stronger and fill out his body. Um, and you look at him more as a power forward. So I think you can go with Isaac as your as your power forward. And I think that you, you can use Scotty Barnes more as, you, you know, a small forward slash power forward coming off the bench. I don't think you need more guards because you have a bunch of them that you already have. Plus, we're not even talking about guys like RJ Hampton and stuff like that that you're still trying to figure out what you're going to do with these guys also that you just brought in. So I think that they just get something different. I just think they give something that they don't have. And I think Scotty Barnes can give them that. When I look at what the Thunder should do, I think the Thunder are in a situation where they wish they could have be higher. And I think that they definitely should be looking to trade up to try to get that franchise cornerstone. You already got Shea, who has shown that he can play the one or the two because he has just been an amazing guard. We call them combo guards. And he has been fantastic in that role, either whether it's playing with Kawhi Leonard or even playing with Chris Paul. He has shown that he's fine in that role. I do think you have to find out what you're going to do with Teo. You're going to have to still find out what Pocahontas he can give you after year going into year two and seeing how that plays out. You still do have Darius Baisley, but I think you just go with Suggs. You you just go with a guy that can defend. You go with a guy that can run your offense. You go with a guy that's not going to get in anybody's way, a guy that's not going to come in chucking up trying to make it his team, and a guy that's just going to try to win you games. And I think that that's something that the Thunder don't have right now, and I think that that's something that Suggs can bring to the table, and I think that they definitely should pick him up. When I look at the Golden State Warriors, I think they trade. I don't really think that they should pick at all. They're in a championship window or bust. When you look at the fact that the Warriors are spending so much money for a team that didn't even make the playoffs this year, that should be their last goal is bringing in another young player. When Steph Curry's in his 30, Clay's in his 30, Draymond's in his 30, Draymond had a defensive caliber year for defensive player caliber year Steph Curry had an MVP year and Klay Thompson had an off year because he didn't play at all and then you have to bring him back in Andrew Wiggins already showed you that you have a legitimate guy at that three and if anything you're trying to upgrade from Andrew Wiggins or upgrade from James Wiseman just to make your team a little bit more dangerous and you're not trying to give up a guy that you know is going to hurt you in return so it's a lot of good players that they can pick right here, but I don't think none of these guys are going to be 
contributors of them trying to win a championship in Golden State again. That's what they're aiming for. That's what they're trying to do. And I don't think that draft in here makes any sense for them at seven. Now, if we were seeing one, two, three, four, or five, okay, but seven is just too low. You're not going to find a superstar here. And even if you could, that's two, three years from now. That's out of their championship window. I think Golden State definitely trades this pick and one of their one of their guys to try to upgrade at a certain position that Steph, Clay, or Draymond doesn't play and try to go all in to be a, a contender again in the Western Conference. So I don't see the Warriors taking this pick. Um, I see the Warriors definitely moving for a veteran. Um, the Orlando Magic again. This, to me, is interesting because I, I do think that the Magic are fine. I don't think that they need to take another gamble because a lot of people want them to take another guy with upside. A lot of people want to take, uh, you know, the Wagner because he um, can fill so many roles. But you go Keon Johnson. You go with the short thing. You go with a guy that can defend. You go with a guy that can put the ball in the basket. Um, you already have, like I said, a depth of young players. You already have a depth of guards. I think you go with a wing that you can play at the three that can be plugged right in, and or you can even trade down in this situation and grab a couple more players or even trade up and try to get you a franchise caliber player to go alongside Jonathan Isaac. And that will be the smarter move for Orlando to do and to trade these two picks and try to move up and get something significant. The question for them is who's going to be willing to trade down and is they offer good enough to where they will give up a franchise cornerstone player for two players that might not be that. We've seen the Hawks do it with Trey Young. They're not complaining right now because they're in the Eastern Conference Finals, but that doesn't always work out because you still have to grow, you still have to develop the player, and they still have to pan out. And that's something that, you know, that's all dictated on the player and the team. So the Magic, to me, they go with Keon, if not trade up to try to get into that top three to try to get you a franchise changing player. Sacramento Kings. I think that they need more scoring. I definitely think Buddy Hill and De'Aaron Fox and Harrison Barnes and those guys have been solid. They have been a respectable team. Not terrible, but also not great. And I think that they really don't have no trade assets besides this pick. So I think that they might as well try to go ahead and take it and try to get a glue guy that can go in and help them Um in multiple ways. So I think you go with Corey. I think Corey moves up into the tenth, I mean into the ninth spot and gives you a little bit more scoring. Um they already added Tyrese Halliburton as a backup point guard. I think they should have a, a legitimate backup wing that I think Corey can bring that. He is one of those guys that could be busty because he either going to be able to pan out or he's just going to be a role player. But the Kings, that's what they need anyway, so I don't think it's going to be that much of a problem. But it, it is going to depend on his role and what they use him and what, what he can do defensively. But when it comes to putting the ball in the basket and scoring, Corey has been proven to be able to do that. He has to do it on the NBA level. I think that that's something that they should go for. When I look at the Pelicans at 10, they in a tough situation, too, because they have Ingram locked up. They have Zion locked up, but they looked so bad um, a lot last year, even though Zion was putting up numbers. He wasn't even named to an all-NBA team, even though he was an all-star, which is a great um, accomplishment for him anyway. But I, I, I do see them you know, being in a situation where they might not get the guy that they want. They might not get a guy that's really going to be significant. But I think that they really have to decide what they're going to do with Lonzo Ball. And if they want to keep him or if they want to move away from him, that will also depend on what they do with this pick and what direction they're going to try to go in as they also bring in a new coach. So put that into consideration. They're going to have a different play style. But they still have a lack of talent when it comes to being able to win now. And they do have a lot of young talent that they got to figure out who they want to keep and who they want to get rid of and how they want to build this roster around Zion and Ingram. And I think that that's their problem right now. 
I think they go with Davian because they do need another defender. This team has been laughed about defensively, and I think Davion, even though he's dropping to me <laughs> in my mock draft, will be a perfect steal at 10. There's always that one guy that drops in the draft, and I think Davion will be that guy that drops this year, and I think that the Pelicans won't complain because they can scoop him up. Um Number 11, we looking at the Charlotte Hornets. And uh, the Charlotte Hornets are in a team where they was just in the playoffs basically all year. They were a LaMelo ball, Gordon Hayward injury away from locking up a playoff spot, but they ended up falling short ultimately and being a team that didn't make it. And they had a team that was very fun, uh, very entertaining, and they're going to be tough to be able to trade out of this because – they're not really in a situation where they want to offload talent plus the talent they got they want to keep because it's hard to keep guys in Charlotte as teams usually go to bigger markets or the teams with more winning pedigree and the Hornets are trying to build that and they got a lot of guys that seem like they love and enjoy playing with them and on the court with each other. So I think that they definitely go with the, the consensus Jalen Johnson. I think that this will give them something that they need if some guys get injured. Plus, he is a guy that can add a little bit more versatility to the offense. And I don't really have a problem with him out of Duke going to Charlotte. When I look at 12, this is tough because the Spurs, they are looking for a superstar. And this is a situation where do you swing big? Or do you just take the short thing, kind of like what they did last year? And even though it didn't help them significantly this year, it did give them another quality um, guy that showed that he can play at the NBA level. But I still think they should try to swing for the fences and try to go for somebody that can really be a significant difference maker. And that's going to be the question for them. Is they going to take that gamble or do they want to do that? So I'm going to go with Moses Moody. I think Moses Moody should move up. I think that they should go for the wing. I think they really miss the wing if they lose DeMar DeRozan. And if they do let him go or he do decide to go in a different direction, they have a bunch of guards that all play the same position, but only one of them can have the ball and none of them are great three-point shooters, which brings another problem. And then they don't really have guys that can literally put the ball in the basket enough. And I think Moody can bring that. Plus he has, you know, a lot of these guys that can really, if he's a workhorse like he has shown, he will thrive in a place like San Antonio, and I think they can get the best out of his talent, and they can get the best out of him as a player, and they can also put him in a, a, a real situation where he can, you know, prosper as a person, but also um, grow his game. So I think that that would be a guy that moves up and literally falls in to that 12th spot. And I think the guy that everybody's saying who, who dropped – was Franz Wagner. I, I dropped him because you, you don't really want to take a guy with that type of risk where these teams are really trying to play for the playoffs or bigger. So I really have him going 13 to, uh, we had 13 to Indiana. Indiana needs a guy with upside. They need a guy that can back up um, the minus and bonus. And I think he'd be a good fit there. When I look at Golden State, I don't know if they still have this pick, but <laughs> if they do decide to keep this particular one, which I doubt they have it, um, you definitely go with Uzman because he is a guy that, to me, you can just plug in right away and he can give you contributions on both ends of the court, but also gives you more rebounding, which they lack a little bit of. And I think that that's something that they can they can pick up if they do take the 14th pick. And with the 15th pick, I think the Wizards are in a tough situation to me because they have Russell Westbrook and Bradley Beal, and they're more in a win-now mode too um, with them both being 30, basically. And I don't really know who they picked because they got Rui. And, and they still trying to use the, uh, the guy that they got last year, too. So I just think that they, they go for a guy that can play now and a guy that can have some type of upset they, upside, too. So I think Josh Falls and Singun, um 
he's a big. I think they need a legitimate big. I think that they showed that even in the playoffs that Russ and Bill makes the job easier on everybody and is mainly because they can drive to the paint, they can collapse the defense, and they always aggroing, and that was the biggest hole for them. How are they going to get a big? What big can they have? They're using Robin Lopez. They're using um, Daniel Gaffer, who's an undersized center legitimately. Um, and I think that they're trying to find that need, and I think he can come in and give them skill, give them versatility at that center position and probably answer their problem long term because of his upside too. And he's somebody that can play with Bradley Bill and Russ and give them, you know, some spacing to a certain extent, um, something that they really didn't have with the other centers that they continue to bring in. And remember, when you're bringing in Gafford, you're bringing in Robin Lopez, and, and you also bringing in Alex Lynn, it just shows you how much you know you need to fill that position. It shows you how much you, you really want to fill it, but you also have a guy that's young that can contribute now and also has potential to be better you can feel that even for the future if you take Sin Gun um, for Washington. So I think that makes sense for them. So I got some people dropping. I got some people rising. I got teams making trades. I got teams, you know, taking win now um, um, players because at the end of the day, when the draft is harder to get the, the lottery picks, even if you suck, you basically are in a situation where you have to win. And a lot of these teams are hungry. A lot of these teams already have established stars. A lot of these teams already have their superstars or, or their core pieces intact. And they're either trying to add one more, get a superstar, add a piece that can help their superstars, or try to add more weapons around their superstars so they can get back to a competitive level. I feel like this draft has those type of guys, but also there's so many players that play in the NBA that teams are going to try to find guys that they can already know can get the job done, and that's why they'll make a trade, or that's why they don't want to go for a guy with upside because they need the short thing instead of the thing that could be something special in the future. So a lot of these teams are going to be desperate. A lot of these teams are going to be patient. And a lot of these teams have so much young talent that they still got to figure out what they're going to do, even for their own future. could be a little confusing as they still have to develop a bunch of guys that haven't really proved anything at the NBA level as far as being impact players just yet. So this draft is going to be fun. It's going to be interesting, especially at the top, and I can't wait till it happen. Y'all finally got what I thought, my analysis on the situation. Let me know what I got wrong, what I got right, what I'm crazy on, and have fun with it. Quinn Wade, basketball analysis, I'm signing out. I'll be back to y'all with more videos tomorrow, coverage of the playoffs, and we should see, can the Bucks make it to the NBA Finals for the first time since 1970? And we'll see, can these teams go from being in the lottery to being in the finals or even in the playoffs, as that's what they all trying to achieve, short-term, long-term, or now? Let's see. I'm gone.